I'm, I'm kind of on the case of the modern world because I think it's not just that people are accidentally on purpose causing tremendous disturbances in nature, not to mention all the refugees that are in the world and all the wars that are going on and all the threats that are going on. It's not just that, it's that people don't even know in a sense how to think about the world anymore. And excuse me for sounding arrogant, but the ancient Greeks said, you can't have just one way of thinking because then you'll only see one way. And so they posed at least two basic ways. The first way was called logos, like logic, like rationality, and that's the one that people know now. People collect statistics. We're in the world of information. But that world has problems that it can't solve. For instance, the Congress, who will keep having committees, and they will keep trying to figure things out, but they won't solve it because they think it's all practical and it's all statistical and it's all quantitative, but that's only half the world. The other half of the world was called mythos. Myth, as in meaning story, as in meaning narrative intelligence, as meaning the depth of feeling that you get when you're alive as a human. In order to see the world, you needed logos, lo logical things and things that make sense and things you could measure and things that are pra practical. And you needed mythos, things that were full of imagination and deep with emotion. You could say the difference between the mind and the heart that if you don't have this mythos, if you don't have this mythological way of thinking, you don't have heart and you don't, and you don't have. <laughs> this is the, <laughs> this is the, uh, this is the dance part of the evening. You see how non-logical that was? That was. So that was mythos kicking in. Like, logic is like, you know, the 110 electricity and then mythos, you get those 220 jolts. <laughs> but, but it's true. It, in mythos, when you feel the story, when you feel the story you're living, like the electricity in your life goes up. And everybody was supposed to, I'm sorry about this, but everybody was supposed to have an experience like somewhere after childhood but before adulthood where they got called into circumstances in which they fully awakened to their own life and the, and the switch was flipped and they got a feeling of the 220 volts of being fully alive on both sides with the, the logos ideas and with the mythos in, instincts and, and, and kind of the imaginal knowledge, so I should mention that, we're talking about the soul, the deepest power of the human soul is imagination. Imagination is not the same as imaginary, the old word is imaginal. Everything that exists had to first be imagined, and the soul of human beings has the power of imagination, and what's needed to solve these intractable problems of the modern world is not more studies usually, even though some of the studies are good, what's needed is imagination. And so soul is where imagination arises from and imagination is another aspect of what's missing in the world. I mean, I think this is what we're in the struggle for, the soul of the individual against the mass culture and the soul of the world against the idea that it's just one big kind of clockwork universe that one day winds down and it ends and it doesn't mean anything because nothing happened. The old idea is the kairos, the Greek word was kairos. K-A-I-R-O-S, Kairos, the moment that opens, like the moment in the cave, and it opens and you see the world from the, your soul into the world, and that's the moment of awakening in Buddhism, it's the moment of the light going on when it comes to human genius, and in the process of that awakening, a person gets the clue of what I'm supposed to be here for, and all of a sudden, it all makes kind of sense. Not that it's all great, and you don't fall down and get in trouble and you know, marry the wrong person, all that stuff happens. Don't, don't worry about that. But, but, but what happens is, in the midst of it, you find your thread, right? you find the part of the, of the weaving that you're intended to do. So I, that's what I'm talking about, and that's the idea that I'm calling the individual connection to the soul of the world. And were that to be the case again, the world would start to make sense again, and people could weave things together, because soul means bringing it together, as opposed to continuing to tear it apart. And it's up to us who are alive now to figure that out.
And I think that we're in a struggle for that kind of thing as opposed to the idea that there's nothing we can do or the idea that someone's going to do it for us or the idea that some single idea is going to fix it all. It's not going to happen that way. I think it's going to happen because people begin to do things that mean something to them.